In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. We have gotten to the end of our Lenten journey, and it all started on a cold early February morning, or at around noon or one o'clock. Do you remember the bishop being here? Do you remember what he said? You probably remember the bow and arrow thing the most, don't you? But he said, you can't scare dead people. You can't scare dead people. And he read about it in the Christian century as a, this is a president of Princeton Seminary talked about the way that we did baptism in the first century. And that baptism was... Uh, the preparation all during that season of Lent. And when they came to the baptismal font, it wasn't a font, it was a pool. They would take off their clothes. Riley said he's very glad we don't do that today. That we do. <laughs> but they take off their robes, they take off their clothes, and they'd step down into the pool, and the people would say that they were buried with Christ. And they would pull them out of the water, and they would say they were raised with Christ to new life. And they did that to affirm that thing that I just said, that you can't scare dead people. So the oppression of Rome, the fear of death, you've already tasted death. If you realize that death isn't the end death has no dominion, then you can't be scared. Even the power of the Roman Empire couldn't scare them if they lived without fear of death. This Easter, we celebrate the joy of knowing that God died for all of us, that our life will continue forever, that we have the promise of everlasting life, but everything about Easter needs to be lived in this day and this time in our own lives. How would the world look if we truly didn't fear death? If the decisions we made, the things we did, were not cast in fear? Mary and the women who came to the tomb and found it empty left knowing that death has no power. You all paraded into the tomb tonight, into death itself, without fear. Because you know that it has no dominion, no power over it. But each year we need that reminder because, boy, we give in to all of the deaths. Our own mortality, death of our reputation, death of our prominence, death of our power, death of the way we see the world. What if we didn't give in to the fear? What if we knew that life and joy and love conquers all? John Claypool, who wrote the blessing that we'll say at the end of the service, was a great preacher. He was actually a Baptist who uh, became an Episcopalian, and he preached an Easter sermon, and he talked about a little-known play called Lazarus Laughed. And it takes place right after Lazarus has been raised, right where the story cuts out. It presumed, it's a big southern uh, play, so it presumed everybody knew the story. Uh, and it takes place right after Scripture cuts out. With Lazarus still in his burial clothes, coming out of the grave, he comes out, puts his arm around Jesus, goes to Mary and Martha and all of those gathered around, and he, he puts his arms around him, and they notice in his eyes that he doesn't have a distant stare, but his eyes look as focused as they ever could be. And as they take off his garment and they, they put something new, they notice that he's looking around and appreciating everything in a new way. Everything is so real and so true, and he touches the ground, and he seems so grateful for everything that the world has to offer. And then finally, somebody gets up the courage to ask him what they're all thinking. What was death like? What was death like? So finally, one of them asks him, and he says, you know what? There is no death at all only life. 
It's as empty. The tomb is as empty as a doorway. It's like a portal from this world to a new place with new experiences, with new promise of drawing our lives closer and closer to God, the generous one, the gracious one that gave us life, that wanted us to be, continues to pull us in. The one who came and, and loved us and redeemed us, the same God just keeps pulling us closer in to another great adventure. His first words after that, as he looked around, were yes, yes, yes. And all of a sudden, they realized that he was looking at his life with an invigorated joy. Everything that had been built up on his shoulders, all that fear of Rome, that fear of this, the fear of hunger, the fear of death was taken off his shoulders. And his house became the hangout. The house became the place of dancing and joy and lightning and lightness. And people would come and they'd celebrate. And they noticed that the town of Bethany started to transform. People treated each other better. That there was a lightness and a joy and a cooperation. When you take away all of the things that fuel those fears, all of the deaths, you take those away. All of a sudden, there is a lightness and a joy. That's what Easter is. It's not just the promise that there will be something after this life. But the fact that we've tasted death, we've walked through it, and we realize it has no dominion. And more boldly, shoulder and shoulder, together, we can proclaim that. The more we don't have to live out of our fears. The more that we can live out of Christ's love spilled for us. A love that promises. It conquers all, even death. Amen.